Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about how I started Ziba. Um, you know, everything that happened behind the scenes before I was able to start. My success story, my journey, um, and anything that comes to my mind. <laughs> so, how did this start? Okay, when I was in uni, um, I studied advertising and one of my project I decided to do a case study on African fashion and um, with a focus on Ankara and you know during the course of this project I was inspired I was like oh I'm gonna do a ready to wear line I'm gonna do ready to wear with Ankara it's gonna be great it's gonna be fashion forward it's just gonna be amazing so one of the holidays I came back to Lagos I remember going to Blisco I bought all sorts of colors and all sorts of things. I gave it to one roadside tailor to help me. It was a natural and national disaster. Wow, it was so horrible. I was like, what the hell is this? I was so angry and sad because I had pictured everything in my head. I was like, yes, I'm going to take this. I'm going to present my ready to wear pieces while I present my project in school. Nobody else would have thought about this. First of all, I'm going to get the highest grade. Second of all, people are just going to be ordering left, right and center because it's just going to be so fantastic. I, I left it in Lagos because it was painfully horrible. I don't, I can't even explain like, it didn't fit number one number two it just was not what i asked for like maybe i asked for a short sleeve the sleeve was long you know like why bro like you really killed my dreams but anyways after that i was like you know what sis like this is not for you just stick to the advertising and um keep it moving so then when i moved back to nigeria i moved back 2013 you know i had um I had a nine to five. I worked in the entertainment industry and um, yeah, it didn't come up again for three years, um, but it kept on coming to my mind simply because, you know, when you live abroad, like no matter what your budget is, there's a Primark budget, there's H&M budget, there's Zara budget, there's a Reese budget, there's, you know, I don't, there was no house of Steve at that time, I don't think, I, I'm not sure, but you know, you had a price point for whatever your budget was and in lagos i just wasn't finding these things um i would want to go to somewhere i'll go and buy a dress 75k is it my baby why and it would be so basic or 100k you want to buy one top ah my it's 55k what's inside this top that's making it 55k like why you know and it just really used to piss me off um, there were a couple of people that had ready to wear like affordable, but it wasn't anything that I wanted. Um, or it would be like China looking, just like fancy, just cheap shit. Man. That was not it either. Or it would be too formal or it would be like Ankara vibes. And I just didn't really find anything that I personally wanted that was affordable. So I'm like, you know what? Why can't I make something that's 5k? Why can't I make something that's 10k? Why can't I, you know, make something that I can sell for 15k? You know, like, why must everything be so expensive? Then I started to research and I couldn't find manufacturers. That was my biggest thing. I had no idea what I was going to do about fabric because my mom was like, oh, go to India and go and buy fabric. Go here, go there. And the fabric was like expensive. I'm like, I'm trying to do affordable clothing that's not gonna work i tried looking at china they're like oh you have to order ten thousand meters i'm like with what money you know that didn't make sense so i kind of gave up again and then i met my little fashion angel she hates that i do this by the way but my ziva story or success story is actually not complete without kiki um so you're just gonna have to deal with these shout outs for the rest of your life so but um yeah so i met her through mutual friends and she guided me through everything she took me to her manufacturers so 
we started using the same factory um she took me to the market showed me how to buy fabric showed me just even like taught me the prices of things because if she didn't i would have walked into that lagos island market and i'm sure i'd have bought fabric for 55k that's what's supposed to be wonky payout <laughs> because i just had no idea you know i never went to fashion school i didn't know anything about fashion i just knew that i wanted to make affordable clothing that everybody could buy um so yeah she taught me everything and i remember buying all the fabric first ordering my labels thinking of a name even that took me the longest whoa there's no type of combination of name that i did not combine my name my mother's name my father's name my kidney cause name this one's name that one's name my name backwards my name from the front to the back my initials trash they were all absolute trash and then one day i was watching ncis now before i say this story i was told to lie about how i came about ziva because the story is just not great but i just don't feel like there's a need for that so I really like NCIS and um, Ziva did something um, that is a character in NCIS and she did something I can't remember but I remember being like Ziva wow I really like this name I wonder what it means so then I googled it and it means like God's light and you know like brightness and like brilliance and stuff I'm like oh hmm Ziva is a new light Ziva is a new light of my life it's going to be bright it's going to be great yeah there's no oh it came to me in my sleep it didn't come to me in my sleep there's no god spoke to me mm -mm -mm. there's none of that so yeah that's how you know and then you know how all these brands are like blah 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 paris blah 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 and i was like you know what let's put lagos on the map let's do lagos um so yeah ziva lagos that's how that came about um what happened after that so yeah i had bought all the fabric done all the labels done all of that and i had spent so much money so obviously i didn't know what i was doing so i had no budget i had no business plan i had no nothing i was just determined um so after spending all of my savings i'm like okay well i've spent all my savings how am i gonna produce like this don't make no sense so i ended up taking a loan i remember from one million naira and um that's how i was able to pay for production um and that got me a couple hundred pieces of clothing and um yeah so when i first did that i wasn't quite sure you know what direction this was going to go in so i didn't tell people that ziva belonged to me i didn't even tell some of my friends until like the last minute i was very scared because that time the media wow they loved me so i i could see the headline in my sleep like the headline was tanya matayo failed business simple no buts ifs or maybes that was what i could see and i'm like shit what if nobody likes it what if nobody buys it and i spent all this money i've even taken a loan like what would i do ha. anyways i had faith and um we did the production got all the clothing and um we had planned a pop-up for the 26th of december 2016 which was our launch and you know our coming out and um i didn't have any staff i did everything myself um two days before i can never forget on the 24th um new year um new year's eve wow christmas eve I was with my parents and my cousin and I literally turned them into my workers. My parents were helping me label stuff. We did the inventory together. We named the pieces and I remember putting everything on a rack. And when I saw the pieces, I was so proud of myself. Like it was a priceless feeling. Like I can't explain how good I felt. I felt accomplished. I felt like I didn't care whether it was going to sell or not at this point because I was just so proud of myself that I said I was going to do this and I did it and I've come this far and you know that's enough now after that so 
so we did the pop-up it was fantastic i almost sold out of everything which was great but then it wasn't because then i had nothing else to sell so people would message me oh hey i'd like to buy this i'm like sorry i don't have it it's out of stock oh i want to buy this no i don't have your size oh i want this it has finished and i felt kind of like a failure because i felt like people would think that i was unserious like why would you start a business and then you don't have anything to sell like that does not actually make any sense and I started to panic and I had like anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, nobody's only going to want to buy anything anymore because why would you start a business and not be able to be consistent? But it just shows you that I had no idea what I was doing. Um, so after that, I was, so the pop-up was in December. My next pop-up was in April. So I literally had three months um, of not much almost nothing and then at some point i finished selling the rest and i literally had nothing left so when i the night before my second pop-up i remember crying i'm like nobody's going to come because they're going to be like this girl is so unserious and i made double the amount of clothing i made the first time because i didn't want to sell out of everything and i remember just being so scared and feeling so useless and i prayed and i went to sleep and then the pop-up happened and it was even better than the first one so many people came so many people bought stuff like i made double the amount of money i made the first time and i was just so happy and grateful like <sighs> sorry i was just enjoying the moment because i could feel it again <laughs> but um yeah so that happened at this point bear in mind that i had no staff as well um and after this obviously we got more traction and people would order stuff and i didn't have a store so i used to carry all the clothes in my boots and whenever i would be somewhere i would you know check the instagram people would dm i would pack their orders call a delivery company and send it out from my boot from wherever i was um and then after that i decided that I needed a store because people would message me like oh can i try it on i'm not sure what my size is um you know and i would go through people's instagram pages and like just try and gauge whether or whether or not they could come to my house so i was gambling with my safety at this point because i let some people come to my house and some people are like mm, i'm not quite sure about this one like maybe not um and i'll be like oh sorry ma we don't have a store and um yeah, so by June of 2017, so six months in to Ziva, I decided that I was going to get a store. I was just looking for something small. And in my mind, just to show you how delusional I was, I'm like, you know what? One million. Baby, I'll get a shop. I'll furnish sheets. It's going to be so lush. Wow. I could not even find a store that cost one million naira. Let's start there why are things so expensive in lagos i don't get it i literally was so delusional i thought four million tops you know joke was on me because there was nothing like that but eventually i found a store my first store was probably the size of your bathroom if you have a small bathroom not a big one it was a shoe box it was so small but i was so proud of that little shoe box <laughs> you cannot even understand it was wow even just the process of setting it up like it cost a lot of money for me at the time but it, it was everything that i needed and you know i didn't realize how much i needed a store until i got the store because now i had sales every day like every single day even if i only sold one thing between instagram and the store i was selling um, and then I had the same problem again. I couldn't keep up with the demand of people ordering stuff because I was using factories and I was on their time because, you know, without them, I don't have anything. Um, and that kind of delayed me, slowed me down a little bit. So I started researching. I found other factories, thankfully. Um, and even one lady who fucked up all my shit. Wow. I, I was never able to sell the stuff I actually gave them out because they were so horrible and I wasn't going to risk my name for a few naira, like no. 
I still even have some somewhere. I, I found them in my office the other day. But like I could literally not sell them. So I went through that and that whole lot because the fabric had wasted. I paid for production that had wasted. But you know, it was a learning experience not to just give anybody your fabric. So I continued using my factories and um, six months in, we got a letter saying that the landlord of my mall was not actually the landlord of the mall and the real landlord had sold the property and we need to pack our load and go. Now, I remember just feeling like the world was against me, like this blowing that I want to blow, I can't, it's not coming, you know? I was very sad, I was just in a bad place like it didn't make sense and you know the worst part is i wanted to move after my rent was up in the one year because it was so small and we had grown so much that i knew that i needed a bigger space but i wasn't ready in just six months and i had six months left of my rent which i never got the money back for by the way but um yeah so i decided to close down the store even before i found a new space because I heard that, you know, when these things get into court, they can seal the building and you'll never get your stuff. And it just wasn't worth it for me to try and experiment and fight or whatever. So I just took all my things, put it in my house and um, yeah, I started looking for a new space. Luckily for me, I found a much bigger and better space, which is where we're at now. Um, and that worked out in my favor, thank God. But um, yeah, and even setting up that, like it was kind of like a rundown old house. I had to redo everything. And again, I was delusional because I thought I was going to spend X amount of money and I ended up spending triple. I spent all of Ziva's money and all of my own money on this bloody building. But, you know, you have to do what you have to do. And um, yeah, that work for me and um i keep saying and um a lot hmm. <laughs> anyways so that is how ziva started um i've had a lot of struggles with staff with customers oh my god with um everything but all in all like if you're determined and you're focused you will figure it out you know like I knew nothing about fashion. I didn't go to fashion school until after I had started Ziva, you know, and I, I went to, I did a course business and fashion um, just to learn the business side of things more than anything. Now I want to do the fashion side. I want to go to fashion school. I want to learn how to sketch because my sketching is not the one boo. I want to learn how to sew. I want to learn how to cut patterns. You know, now I'm at that stage where I want to know more and I want to learn more and I'm going to do it. I'm going to surprise you. Um, yeah, we now have our own factory, which we just started production, I think, a week ago now. I'm so excited. I'm going to do a video about that, just setting up the factory, the factory space. Um, so watch out because I'm about to start releasing clothes left, right and center course i know i'm able to <laughs> but um yeah my tips what would my tips be just be determined use social media if not for social media ziva would not be where it's at i keep telling people that i sell 65 percent, if not 70 percent of my stuff through instagram I have a lot of walk-ins, but I mean, international people through Instagram. We don't have a website. We're working on it now. I'm going to get my life together. <laughs> but um, yeah, use social media to your advantage. Like post, post your work. I know a lot of people that don't post shit on their personal page. And I'm like, okay, so how do you want people to know, one, that you own this business or two, that you even do this? Oh, I don't want to cramp my, my page style. Huh? I don't I don't understand my friend push your business push it like it's going out of fashion boo if I can open your mouth yeah and scream ziva inside I will 
Why did I say mouth? I meant ears. Wow. But anyways, I'm not going to edit that out. So my point is just push your business, promote your business. Nobody's going to be able to promote your business like you will be able to do. Nobody's going to carry your business on their head because it's not their business. It's yours. So push it. Like tell people about it. Go for conferences. Go for like exhibitions. Go for things that, you know, are in line with what you're doing. Take your business card. Sell yourself. Like there's nothing wrong with it. Promote yourself. People might not like your picture. People might not like your post, but they will see it. Do you understand? It's not even about the likes and things like that because some people are just haters. That's the honest truth. I've had somebody tell me, oh, you post Diva too much. And see, if I don't post it, who will post it for me? Is it going to be you? No. So do you, boo. Yeah, post as much as you can. Shout it from any rooftop and be proud because it's not easy to start a business. It's not easy to stay consistent in a business it's not even easy to have a business and be sane you know it's very hard being sane these days so that's combined with like a business or if you have a family like i'm struggling trying to balance ziva my child my boo it's it's a lot of work so yeah um for my next video i wanted to answer questions about how to start a business or anything you know about my business or business in nigeria or anything actually so please comment below or dm me on instagram or comment on this video post on instagram and just let me know what questions you have and then i'll do a video answering all of that thank you so much for watching guys don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss my next beat Facts, you don't want to miss any of my videos because they are going to be juicy. I hope you learned something. <laughs> Bye.